Okay, today I'm going to do a little video and I'm going to change out the tachometer that I have there in the center of the dash, which is a very cheap $19 tachometer that just uh, I have wedged in there and uh, I never have liked it. So we're going to put in this classic instruments one that's almost of the same style, but it will look very nice recessed in there. We'll see how it turns out. So of course, removing the dash is the first step. So I'm just gonna go through this in fast motion and kind of let you know what I'm doing. I took off the bottom cover panel below um, so I could get to the bottom of the uh, steering column and then taking out the old tachometer here and uh, pulling back the rubber gasket. And then I'm going to disconnect the old tachometer's wiring. I've got it on a plug underneath there so that can come out. And then the next thing is here I'm removing the knobs. They've got to come off there so that I can uh, pull the dash off. And the um, headlight switch, uh, you have to reach up under there and push a pin in so you can take out the, take out the, uh, the stem. And so then I'll take the bezels off on the front of that. The next step here is I'm mean, underneath there with a 5 16 wrench taking off the oil pressure sending unit or the oil pressure gauge hard line. And then uh, after that I'm loosening up the two bolts that hold the steering column to drop it down just a little bit to make it easier to get the uh, dash panel out of there. And so it, uh, you've got to give, a, give yourself about, about a half an inch of space. And then uh, take out the uh, bezel screws, of course. Uh, they, you know, there's, I think, six of them. There's two at the bottom, two on the sides, and two on the top. So I'm just zipping through these here really quick. It's kind of fun to put this in fast motion so that uh, you can just go through the steps really quickly because if anybody's worked on one of these, they've had this dash cluster in and out of here dozens of times. And this is probably my 10th time having it out. So I'm getting better at it all the time. And then I've got to get the wiring harness out of there and I got to reach up inside and pop the two side clips to get the wiring harness out. And it's out and that should be about it. Here's a shot of the original dash right after I upgraded it the last time. So you can see in the center where we're going to need to modify for the tack. Okay, so what do we have here? We're going to have to verify that this going to fit in there and it looks like it will, but will it fit behind the lens or will it stick out in front of the lens? That'll be determined. I think it can fit back in and be recessed in inside this groove here. So we need to start disassembly and see where that's going to start to fit to start with. This I think I'm going to get a towel to set that down on. Okay, so I'm going to need to mark each of these bulbs because I'm probably going to have to split this in half. The aftermarket, or the one that would go in there if there was a real tack in there, has a loop to it. But I'll just have to extend these, cut this and extend those across for this. First thing I have to do is mark them all because these are polarized. They're, they're LEDs and they have a positive and a negative. So I'm just going to mark them all. Let me see if red will show on there. Just a quick little side note here. I was marking these because I was under the impression from what I could remember that these were polarized LEDs, but these are actually have a, have a circuit in them, so they can go in either direction. So I really didn't need to mark which ones were which, but uh, uh, I didn't know that at the time. So it'll, you know, it was time well spent just to learn. It's always a learning process. With all the bulbs marked, and then uh, I just took them out and kept them in order and uh, taken off the uh, screws, terminals on the back of the uh, amp gauge, the temperature sensor, and then over there on the fuel sensor, pulling off the screws off of the back of that. And then there's a couple of ground screws that holds that uh, whole uh, um, circuit on there on the back of that panel. So there's two ground screws there that come off as well. Last time I had this apart, I sandblasted this. That's why it's so nice and clean now. 
very pretty. When I get ready to cut the hole in here, I will take all the rest of that out of there so I don't hurt it. Okay. And that'll have to be cut out too. That'll be quite the quite the job. But so much cheaper than doing the entire conversion. So let's see what this looks like. Okay, so we get a couple options. to open up that hole and fit this in or go through this way so it's just a little off either way, but I think I want to put it in from the back. In there. So I'm going to have to cut the back of this bezel. And this bezel is replaceable in case I really mess it up. I can replace it, but I'm going to try to cut that down so that it can recess in there. So that's where I'm at for now. And you probably didn't see that those fell out, but they sit up in along there to keep the rattles out. And I think there's one on the floor I need to find out as well. So I'm going to stop there and uh, do some thinking. Okay, what I've figured out here is that if I can want to get this, 
gauge to sit right on that little chrome shoulder on the gauge. Inside this, I have to do a little trimming because it won't set in there. But if I trim it right there above that shoulder, this it will sit perfectly on this gauge's shoulder and the chrome will hide any bad cut I make. And then once that's done, I'll be able to cut the hole in the lens from behind because I'll be able to mark where I need to cut it, cut the lens out. Then I'll also cut the backing plate so it can go through there as well. So that is the next steps, figuring out what the best option is to cut that hole as clean as possible. And I've got some ideas, but I haven't uh, explored all my options yet. Well, I've made some progress. I think it's pretty darn good progress. You can see that there. I've got that fitting in very well. And the way that I did it was that once I used a uh, caliper to scribe the depth that I needed to cut that at, I used a cutoff wheel on my Dremel, or actually my Milwaukee rotary tool, and I cut along close to the line that I had scribed with the, with the small cutoff tool, and then cleaned it up using a carbide tip to get it down closer and right down to the line so that I've got a nice uh, surface, it's fairly even, and then the gauge just sits in that, uh, in that hole. So hopefully, I may have to do a little more trimming on that, but hopefully that's going to bring it down to about the same level as the other uh, gauge surfaces so that when I cut out the hole in the back of the lens to fit over this, it will actually be what is used to hold down the back of this gauge into that, uh, into that spot. So the next step I'm going to do is mark this hole this right in here. So that's where that sits and I did not, I made sure that I did not uh, hurt the, the alignment pins at all going into here. So now I've got my, got that in there and I can mark the hole where I need to cut. It should be about right because of the thickness of this pin. So now I've got my hole made, or the, where, the, where I need to cut, into this plastic. And I think I'm going to use my uh, scroll saw to cut this, but I'm going to need to protect the plastic while I do that. So I'm going to cover the surface of the plastic with masking tape, the blue masking tape that won't stick too much. So I don't want to pull off anything, any of the uh, painting on here. But then I'll cut this hole out to the size of the back of the gauge so that it will sit on that and hold it in. Okay, so I've got the uh, back side of this or the front, the face of this covered in the blue uh, masking tapes because it doesn't have a strong adhesive so it won't pull off any paint or anything and I need that protection so I don't scuff the surface while I'm running this through the scroll saw to cut out this hole. And I didn't want to put the tape on the back because of the, the lettering and everything is on the back. And it's just going to get dusty on this side. It'll blow off. 
but if I put the tape on there, even the light, the blue tape, it could possibly take off some of that, um, the lettering off the back of the lens. So the first thing I need to do is get a, a pilot hole drilled through here and then I'll feed the blade through uh, the hole here. There may be a couple of jumps ahead because this is not, not easy to do to feed that through. But the first thing I'm gonna do is drill a hole close to where I want that to start. Almost there. Okay, got my pilot hole. So now what I need to do is I've, I'm going to be taking that uh, blade off the top. Make sure the tension's off. So now I'm just going to feed this through. And I've got a fine blade on here because I want it to be a fine blade, fine cut. Okay. So I've got that set to a fine adjustment. And I want it to go very slowly. This is the little air thing that blows the dust out of my line of sight. I'm going to try it at the slowest speed first. I'm running through this in fast motion here. It's very te tedious and time consuming. Uh, so this is at 20 times speed. You have to go extremely slow so that you don't uh, gall up the, uh, the plastic as you're going because the blade will heat up the plastic and it'll gall and seize on the blade and it just snaps right off. So I've learned from years of experience with this tool that you just take your time. There, the cut is finished. See how close we are. Look at that. Okay, so we check that. So let's uh, take off the tape. Now let's leave the tape on. We'll just take it away from the guides so we can put the lens back in. Let's see how well it fits. Look at that. And I see that it is not letting the plastic go all the way down because of the height of that flange around this around this so I'm gonna have to do some trimming and I'm not sure yes there is a lip here and that's about how much I have to go down Let's see if I can raise that up and show you. Because all of these lenses have a slight lip right there. So if I, I think if I take that lip down, that might give me the recess I need and just flush that off. So I'll have to figure out how to do that. It'll most likely be using the uh, carbide bit, maybe going around it like this and just taking it down a little at a time, but I have to figure that one out. So once I figured that out, I'll continue to record. 
Well, what I'm going to try to attempt is using this carbide bit to take off the lip that's about a sixteenth of an inch high from that lens, and I think that'll give me the depth I need for using it to, uh, to secure down this gauge. So I just thought I'd demonstrate a little bit about how I'm going to try to do that from underneath. And if I go around very carefully and just take it down just to the surface, I think that will be enough. So I'm going to do a little of a demonstration, then I'm going to just turn off the camera and do the rest. But uh, time consuming. But at least I've got that little uh, lip as a guide. I think that will do it. It'll also give me the angle that this flange has got on it there as well. So that will give me about the depth I need I believe. And if it's a little too much I can put a tiny piece of uh, a thin piece of rubber around there to take up the space. So. I think we're on the right track here. Just finishing up this tedious process. It's got just a tiny bit left there along there, but I've got most of it done fairly smooth. It doesn't really matter how smooth it is as long as it's fairly even. Thought I'd just finish it up a little bit on camera. By the way, this ha, almost did it there. This is getting very, very flimsy with only these two thin areas here left to hold the two sides together. Let's finish this. Okay. So let's give it another test fit. See how we did. Keep looking at that to make sure I've got it in right side up, but it's like it doesn't matter at this point, dummy. that is just about right. Those lenses come up flush to the surface and it's holding pressure against that uh, against the tack. So that turned out pretty darn good. That's gonna the lenses are gonna be flush and it's gonna hold the tachometer in with the pressure of the lens and then when I do the other backing plate I'll cut a hole in this next and then that will hold everything down that's what holds pressure against the back of the lens and gives it depth for the for the meters so next step is to take that back out, put this back in, put this in, draw another circle to cut the hole in the back. So that'll be the next step. 
cut the hole in this panel. So when cutting through the sheet metal, I've actually increased the speed of the blade quite a bit on this. Um, it, it still takes just as long to go around, but I've increased the speed to give myself a cleaner cut. And the metal um, tends to jump around if you go too slow anyway. I don't know why I didn't explain in here why I'm doing this, but you should... It should be quite obvious. I'm de deburring the metal so it doesn't scratch as it goes through, just to smooth out the opening in there. Might need a little more trimming, but we'll see. It's going to look pretty nice in there. Now there's only one more piece we need to cut a hole in. That's going to be the backing plate. So, now I need to take it all apart and mark my hole on this one. Should be a little easier to cut though. I was a little off on my uh, hole marking on this one, so you'll see when the backing plant panel is put on there that the hole's a little off center. Well, let's see how we did. Wasn't sure on this hole. And I was right. For some reason, I got off on that cut. It's the right size, it's just not in the right place. So, luckily, it's not going to hurt anything. In fact, I don't even need to worry about fixing it because all I really needed to do was to get through to these things here. And another thing that I was thinking about as I was doing this is because this actually had enough recess in there, I don't think I'm going to need to cut up my I don't think I'm going to need to cut this up. I'm just going to need to drill those two holes through there and cut a square hole for that plug. I won't need to modify this at all. I'll have to just make sure that those light bulbs are good before this is put down. So that's interesting. Things are coming together very well. Well, I jumped ahead just a little bit. Um, I have it all reassembled. But you can see on the back that the uh, with the back on, 
the gauge is fairly flush, so I'll be able to put that circuit board back on just by drilling a couple of holes for the screw screws to come through and for the plug to go on. Bad bad lighting there, sorry. So that's uh, that's going to be a good good thing there. But here is what the finished product was going to look like. Those uh, gauge that gauge fits into this cluster and looks so natural I couldn't be happier with it so now I need to take it all back apart so that I can repaint this ring right in here from the because it's been uh, the old uh, crappy tack took some of the foam some of the paint with it on the foam that was holding it in place so I'm gonna have to repaint that so I'm gonna just take it all back apart and uh, paint that let it sit overnight and then tomorrow I will go through the steps of what I need to do to get the circuit board back on here and then that will basically complete it so I think uh, I've got that finished up with what I'm doing for the day well, we're down to final assembly, and uh, what I've got here is a wiring schematic for the truck. And what I was going to look for is on the gauge itself to see if I've got everything on the back of the gauge cluster I need to power and run the uh, tachometer, and I believe I do. So I should the only wire that I should have to have outside of the uh, um, wired to the back of this circuit board should be able to get power, ground, dash lights, and then the tack wire will be the only thing that won't be able to connect to this. So that'll be pretty good. But uh, let's get busy with the final assembly and that'll be the next step anyway. So set that aside. And we've got the uh, face plate here. I've got it freshly painted on the inside of the bezel for the for the uh, tachometer. So we'll just start in. Bring in. One thing I didn't show before was on this tachometer, I made little O-rings out of rubber inner tube material. And that's what uh, the lens is going on the back up against to keep it from twisting. So we'll just get that centered. And I did just finish polishing the lens as best I could. Just blow off the last of the dust. Oh, and I just remembered I forgot something already. One of the things that goes in here are these little spacers. And they sit Okay, got those little buggers figured out and that is set in there now. I didn't think you wanted to watch me screw all these screws in very slowly one at a time, so I thought I'd just speed it up a little bit. Zip 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 zip. It's kind of fun to be able to speed it up like that. One of the things I always do when putting screws back in plastic is back them out until I find the existing thread that the screw has cut in the plastic so that it doesn't create a new one. And if you just back up, you'll feel it drop into the thread in the old plastic that it created. Otherwise, you're going to be cutting new threads with these screws. And that is uh, that you're taking a chance on splitting the plastic that way. And that's in. That doesn't want to move. Everything looks very nice. So 
So now the next step will be to calculate where I need to drill through these holes for those two posts to come up through. That will be the first step. It looks like I may be in a little bit of trouble because they might be right on that right on that one contact strip. So that may not be a good thing. So what I might end up doing is cutting these screws off and then protecting them with plastic. I can't take the case apart to, to take those off of there and just unscrew them because the I can't get to the inside of this case. It's been crimped together. But I think that, that might be the way to go on this is just to uh, cut those off as close as possible to the nuts because it looks like they want to come right through where that strip is. I think we're going to be okay up there on the one for the four plug. Keep looking at my head there. Um, for the plug, for the wires, I think we'll be fine on that one. But for these... Uh, plugs here we're going to have to cut those off so most likely going to be my Dremel and a cutoff wheel and to save from getting in anything inside there I think what I'm going to do first is what I'd already planned on doing anyway I've got this foil tape and I'm going to seal all of this around here with this foil tape and then then I'll do the cutoffs on those because otherwise metal, metal shavings and particles will go down inside of there. So. I believe this is a ducting tape. I found it uh, at the hardware store one time. I, I used to have some that was thicker, but this is a pliable metal tape. Uh, as you notice when I push down on it, I, it kind of conforms as I push it down because it stretches a little bit, but works really good for these places and it's really, really thin. There, that's all sealed up. Now I'm just gonna cover holes up so no metal filings go down in them. Dremel cutoff wheel works really good for this. I was just being very careful to make sure I didn't get it too hot and melt the plastic. But uh, after I cut each one off, I just used a little bit of, uh, uh, I smoothed it a little bit as I was going uh, so that it would be smooth against the back of that circuit board. out real well and I'm not worried about those rubbing through on the back because this is a very thick vinyl. I'll give that some thought as I go but I don't believe I, I need to worry about that, Th those rubbing through or anything because there's not really much vibration there. And those are real smooth since I kind of took all the little edges off with that Dremel when I finished. There are a few more metal filings there. And these are the ground screws. So I know I've got a place to connect for negative. So what I'm doing on this initial setup connection here is I'm just going to uh, put on the two screws that hold it in place where I need to cut through for that connector. Okay, so now I need to take that off and cut that hole out. 
had to move the camera over a little bit so the glare wasn't so bad, but um, cutting off the uh, cutting out the little spot for that uh, plug that goes in the back of the tachometer for the wires to come through. And that will work. So now what I can do put the uh, screws back in. I'm not quite tightening them yet because I want to get all of these in place. That's temperature gauge. That's the fuel gauge. This is the temperature gauge. That's the amp gauge. So everything looks like it's sitting down like it's supposed to. Tighten up ground screws. I may put a wire around one of those, but I might also solder in. I just haven't decided yet on how I'm going to do the wiring yet. are going back in exactly like they came out. The two incandescents I'm not too worried about because these are left as incandescents for because I didn't know how they would affect the circuit for the temperature and the brake. But the rest are all LEDs. interesting. I left the blinkers as incandescent too. That was because before they were part of the draw on the blinker circuit. Now these could actually go in as LED. And I think I'm going to convert those. Happen to have some more of the LED bulbs. And I tested these yesterday and they are, they can be put in either way. So now that will be an LED bulb. Same thing with. This other indicator. There, they are all in. And then the uh, wiring harness for the tack goes in here. So now I need to figure out where I'm going to pick up my ground, my switched power, my lights, and then the tack. These two will be unused. So I will figure out how to tidy those up, but I don't want to cut them off in case I ever decide to use this as a different, uh, for a different reason. Time for an update. I've got the wiring completed, so I'm going to uh, show you what I've done here. And what I did is on the plug coming out of the tack, I've got the uh, white wire. It goes out through the firewall to the negative side of the coil for the tack. Um, and then the gray up here is for the dash lights, and that is the same foil. I've soldered to the foil. 
that goes around to all of the, the, the hot side of all of the dash lights. So that's the gray. The black is the ground. And if you follow this one over, you can see it is grounded to the chassis, which is grounded over here. So it'll, it'll be uh, the whole back plane is a, is a ground. And then the pink comes out here and this is ignition positive. And that's the same ignition positive that runs the um, positive side of the fuel gauge. And it also runs the positive side of the temp gauge down here and the two idiot lights over here. So it is all ready to go back into the uh, into the truck. Um, there's not much else to do at this point. Like I say, this I'll wire. I've got a wire under the dash already that I'll splice into. In fact, I may even, uh, now that I'm thinking about it, I might just put on a weather, weather pack connector on that now before I even get this to there. So uh, otherwise, this is pretty much ready to go back into the into the uh, truck and I'm very happy with the way everything turned out on this and let's see if I can do this without getting the glare and uh, I think the whole thing turned out extremely well I think it looks really nice in there and it uh, fits the uh, vintage look of the dash or the vintage you know what I mean I hope you've enjoyed my first attempt at an instructional video. It was a great project.